Hey, it's Andrew. Welcome to Beat Therapy. I've been in the games industry for a while. Well, I've been around it. On the edge of it, at least. On the periphery. I've seen that we have the capacity for change and that cultural shifts can happen quickly, but it usually takes a few people to get that started. Most of these changes are geared towards fostering more respect between employers and employees and generally moving us all towards being somewhat better people. I hope that sharing some of my experience in this video can contribute to furthering that goal. Back in 2006, it was normal for programmers and other game company personnel to work excessive, often unpaid overtime, and wear this as some kind of badge of honor, like it was proof of how much you cared about the industry. This was absolute nonsense, but standing up and voicing your concerns at the time might have been a career killer. Burnout rates were high, graduates were plentiful and ripe for exploitation, and the industry was deeply lacking any kind of mature management or foresight. There were plenty of other cringeworthy practices that wouldn't fly today at all, and that's a good thing. Things have improved and are improving still. My experience in the game audio sector also exposed me to some less than nice practices over the years as well. There was a definite sense of competition to the point of being cutthroat. It might have been something to do with the global financial crisis at the time that really brought out the worst in people. But even before that, it was fairly dark and there wasn't any local game audio community that I could have pointed to active and deliberate sabotage, duplicity, and some other quite dark chapters that maybe one day we can talk about are etched into my memory of that time. But as for improvements, it's now pretty much standard practice for composers to license their music to games companies rather than sell the copyright, for example. That's progress. That's something closer to what we might call fair. Revenue sharing and engaging audio people early in the development process is gradually becoming more common. Also, the local game dev scene is looking quite healthy, and there's a thriving game audio community, many of whom are actually friends. My point is, cooperation is way better than constant competition. Back to me. In some of my presentations, I have a slide that sums up a few pivotal moments in my career. This has become shorthand with some of my close friends when talking about my personality and my apparent tendency to occasionally clash with the status quo. There have been jobs lost to certain things I shouldn't have said. I've been fired for saying the wrong thing. But it's generally me being too honest and too direct that gets me into trouble. There's also a flip side to this, which is nice, and means that my personality isn't a complete liability. When I first heard the pitch for Speaking Simulator at a local game meetup, the developers were telling me with great enthusiasm how they were planning a game based around emulating the complexities of human speech. My immediate, unfiltered response was, I'm glad I'm not doing that. As a struggling artist, I admit this probably wasn't the smartest thing to say, but it was my honest reaction and it led to me actually landing the job. There was also the time where an established game developer was telling me, with an air of authority, that his procedural mega game would be using the default audio tools within the Unreal Engine. Again, as a struggling composer, I was probably supposed to nod politely and express enthusiasm. Instead, I blurted, that's a terrible idea and I'm intervening on human rights grounds. I basically invited myself to his workplace and forced a demonstration of FMOD on his entire team. Within about three minutes, I had convinced each of them that audio middleware exists for a reason and now their current composer is using WISE. You're welcome. I'm mentioning the don't be you phenomenon because this video is possibly about to become another one. You knew I was building to something, right? Recently, I had the experience of applying for a full-time game audio gig with a local games company, pitching to people that I already know, colleagues of industry, and it went a little bit like this. Show me what you got. Oh, hey man, you've seen my work before, but sure, here's a link to my YouTube channel. Show me what you got. Um, okay, here's a link to my list of credits and a heap of commercial titles I've worked on. Show me what you got. Here's some of my greatest hits and some selected tracks to showcase my ability to write to a range of moods and styles. I like what you got. Now you can proceed to the test. What kind of test? Basically, we need you to demonstrate your ability to do the work we've already seen you can do, but with very ambiguous and arbitrary parameters in a total vacuum. Total vacuum? I'm, I'm more used to working with people. Do you think we could have a chat? No, email me. I'm spending time with family. Welcome to the vacuum. Okay. This was probably the point where, in hindsight, I could have preserved my dignity if I'd politely declined their invitation to proceed. 
Yes, they were interested in my work, but I didn't get any sense that they were interested in this being a two-way process or a conversation. At the time, I was living in a unit surrounded by active construction sites, under a fair bit of stress, not in the best headspace for composing, and in the process of moving house by myself. Morty, good music comes from people who are relaxed. Also, writing music in a competitive mindset, knowing that there are others on the shortlist and you need to beat them, feels wrong on so many levels. But let's be honest, this kind of artistic integrity, this kind of dignity is expensive. And so is the rent. And with the impending global financial apocalypse looming, you can see how the offer of a full-time gig like this holds a certain appeal. So I cut short the one chance I'd had to see my family since this whole pandemic chaos started so I could get back to making this track. Links in the description if you want to hear the whole thing. After two months of waiting, more than 20 hours of work, numerous requests for a phone call during that time, I finally received my official rejection by form letter in an email. I can understand that from a business perspective, maybe my feelings are irrelevant. Maybe it's all about the bottom line and churning through people, having them spend multiple hours working on an audition and not bothering to engage any of them in any kind of conversation. Maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine and dandy. Or maybe there's another word for it. I'm fairly sure there is. Rude. That's the one word that seems to nicely fit on this constellation of truly shitty behavior. The process was humiliating, objectively pointless, and I feel very much like I was reliving Ode to Failure. That's a YouTube video of mine. If you haven't seen it, don't bother looking it up. We're all paying nothing but lip service to mental health if this is allowed to be standard practice for an industry. Where's the basic human empathy? What happened to manners? This behavior is coming from a person who started in the industry at the same time I did. I met him when we both sat through a lecture from Mick Gordon, so there was potentially some sense of camaraderie for having that experience together. And for the last several years, he's been part of the Game Audio group here in Brisbane. And I imagine there was some kind of rapport, but apparently no. I think this really highlights the stark difference between working for someone versus working with them. And from here on, I'm really only interested in the latter. Look, I'm sure that making a decision and choosing someone from a large talent pool is difficult. I'm also sure there are better ways to go about it and that phone calls aren't that expensive in 2020. A few years ago, a friend shared a really useful insight with me. I was in a situation where I was reeling from being completely ghosted by an ex, ruminating on the whole situation many months after the breakup. I was hooked on the injustice of it and trying to apply logic and reason to find a way to make it feel fair. It was a very difficult time, but what he said to me was really useful and completely diffused any sense of righteous anger I might have had about the situation. He said, all you can have are preferences. And he was right. I would prefer to be treated in a certain way, but sometimes things don't work out the way we'd prefer. So in this situation, I'm not intending to cast stones or place blame. I'm also not doing this to air dirty laundry in public. I'm merely outlining what I would have preferred, and I hope it gives some insight into the process from my perspective, and maybe inspires a bit of change to encourage more human, more courteous, hiring practices in the future. We work in this amazing industry where we can bring robots to life, battle mythical creatures and explore vast fantasy worlds. But maybe we need to keep one foot in the real world and remember that real human interactions are important and that it doesn't take much effort to make people feel valued and respected. Changing gears. I also wrote another piece as a demo for a different company last year. And I haven't shared this track before, so we'll check it out in a sec. This was not an audition. This was the result of a conversation with a small indie team. They're making a really awesome game and I was keen to contribute. It's a very different context. I spent maybe half a day working on this demo track as a possible title sequence. I did this because I believed in the game and because composing with some orchestral sounds was a useful exercise to me in professional development. They ended up going with someone who had more orchestral experience, which is fine, no hard feelings. Great team, they're still my friends. I also really like this track too, so maybe I can use it one day on another game. Thanks for stopping by. We can talk about something lighter next time, I promise. <laughs>